Well, hello, boys and girls. Hi. What a wonderful day it is today in our money-based economy. Well, sit back and relax and get ready for the guy who's about to ruin everything. I'm puzzled. Uh, are you really seriously suggesting that Jesus Christ was a mushroom? Wait. Jesus was a mushroom, Roberts. Yes. You are dealing with a, a secret cult, a secret society. Welcome to Waning Interest. So far as my target audience goes, no radio is worse than country western. Now imagine having to promote my show on the top-rated CW morning show in Shreveport, Louisiana, on the day after the second election of George W. Bush. I was with my friend comedian Brett Erickson. The station was seriously concerned due to our reputations and we were repeatedly warned by the radio club that this was tight-ass conservative radio, that the station was very important to their livelihood and to please not go too far. We chose to, instead of toning it down, just go in the opposite direction. We'd go hardcore in favor of the hosts and the listeners, hard right wing and wiping it in the non-listeners' faces. George Bush won, so just suck it up, liberals. Kiss my butt, Michael Moore, except the fact that you lost. We wiped our asses on the Hollywood leftists and all but blew the troops who were dying for your freedom. Oh, sorry. I was uh, rereading Doug Stanhope, This Is Not Fame, uh, a From What I Rememoir. Forward by Drew Pinsky, M.D. Hilarious book. That was Doug, obviously, not me, and doing radio in Shreveport, Louisiana. I wouldn't be caught dead there, at least not unless you paid me. You know, the guy that hates money. But, hey, you said it, you're the one that says it's an incentive. Well, make it an incentive to get me to go back to Louisiana. I've never been, what is it? I've been, I've been in New Orleans a few times. Shouldn't have survived once. That's a story for another hour. Oh, by the way, welcome to the Waning Interest uh, podcast, hour number 18, Unlocked Wednesday. What does that mean? It means that I do three hours a week if you're just tuning in for the first time. I do three hours a week, sometimes a bonus hour, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The Monday and the Friday hours are on the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash waning interest. Waning with a Y, because you know why. Uh, and those, but the Monday and Wednesday, they're for the Patreon patrons, which at the moment, not a whole bunch. I've only been going, what, this is the fifth week, I think, and this is a milestone. It's waning interest podcast number 18. Uh, my previous podcast, I only did 17 and then quit. Um. Oh, who the hell is Nate the Bullet? Yes. How did you, why are you even, I didn't even say Nate the Bullet, so how, how are you asking, why are you even asking who is Nate the Bullet when I didn't even say the name? It's like you, you are a, uh, what is it? I don't want to say, no, you're not a demon. You're like, um, not a troll. Um, I think you're awesome. But it's like you're hidden. What am I trying to say? You're like hidden in the in my garage band. Just pop out whenever you want. Oh, who the hell is Nathan nice Bullet? See? It's a podcast I used to do. You can still find him if you want. If you don't know that already on YouTube. B U L L I T T. Oh, who the hell is Nathan nice Bullet? Just told you! This means there's going to be a lot of editing going on. She's trying to steal my show, man. But, so the Wednesday hours are, Wednesdays go up on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, YouTube, TuneIn, Google Play, Laughable, maybe Spotify, fuck if I know. But also on the Monday and, when, Monday and Friday Patreon hours, I leave them unlocked for a few days after I put them up. Um... But then, you know, have to lock them, but that's where you'll find. That's why the numbers are all off here if you're coming from iTunes or one of those other places. 
um, the numbers are off. You're like, wait, where's one? Where's where's uh, seventeen? You know, that's why. How's that for the silliest, uh, t- most twisted, um, annoying explanation you've ever heard? That's what we do here. Did I tell you Doug Stanhope has a book called This Is Not Fame, from what I, from what I remember? I did, I did, I did. Just a little plug. I love Doug. Hey, man, didn't mean to do that. But yeah, speaking of the Patreon, for as little as two bucks a month, you could be a whip. You could be part of the Waning Interest Podcast pack. And then you can get the Monday and Friday hours as well. You get everything. And plus, all the promos are free. Some are better than others. I've decided i got to sit on them a little bit longer and go, wait, do I want to put this out? There's a handful I want to yank, but then I go back, and I listen to them again after not liking them, and I go, wait, no, this is fucking funny. So, you know, it's part of being uh, schizophrenic, which is not true because I'm not. (laughs) Stop it. None of those things. Bipolar. They tried to throw bipolar on me. That's really fucking stupid. Everybody's bipolar. Just want to get you to suck on those big pharma pills. Fuck that. No thank you. If I want Xanax, I'll smoke a beautiful indica. Speaking of country western that Doug was talking about in that little part that I was reading from This Is Not Fame. I'm walking uh, home just a bit ago from the store, and some dude tells me, I get a lot of different things, and this is a new one. I've not heard it, but I thought it was funny and uh, because it goes with a story that I'm going to tell with it. I'm coming home, and this guy stops me and says, anybody ever tell you you look like one of the guys from Brooks and Dunn? And I thought that was kind of weird, you know, it's not as, I'm not specific, you know, because I have brown hair, Kix Brooks has brown hair, but wears a hat and a beard, or just a mustache. Ronnie Dunn usually wears a whole beard, I think, or at least a goatee, and he has blonde hair, but that, that does, my hair kind of looks like his right now, I guess, but so the guy goes, I don't know which one, the one without the hat. <laughs> I'm like, so I look like Ronnie Dunn, even though he has blonde hair. I've never gotten that one before. Never got Ronnie Dunn from Brooks and Dunn. But I do have, strangely enough, a Ronnie Dunn story. When I lived in Nashville, my my ex-wife uh, used to work for uh, basically in country music for a couple of years. So we lived in Nashville for a couple of years. It's where I owned my first house, which was pretty awesome. Pretty fucking awesome, especially because it was a brand new house. It wasn't a house that somebody had lived in. That was a beautiful thing. I do miss that part. But we were in Nashville for a couple of years. And when I first, when we first moved there, I didn't want to work in radio back I didn't want to go back into radio just yet but I did some side voice work and actually a couple of things for CMT and um, we knew somebody who was a who who had a production company and did a lot of music videos and stuff so I said sure I'll I'll be a PA and I'll do that stuff uh, you know a couple times a week sure so I get this one gig, and they don't tell me what the gig is. They just send me the address and directions when I get to the address, how to go to the back. It's not the front house. It's, you know, in the, it's in the back where it looks like a barn, but it's not actually a barn, you know. So I get there, and I drive to the back and, and uh, meet up with everybody else, the rest of the crew, and we start unloading stuff. And I'm not asking where we are. I have no idea what we're doing. I'm just doing the job, just paying attention to the job, man. Yeah, right. Like you weren't cracking jokes and shit. Yeah, maybe. But it didn't matter what I was doing. I didn't, didn't, I didn't 
didn't ask, didn't whatever. So at one point, I have, I go to the restroom in this barn, and it's a really cool barn. It's not an actual barn inside. There's one half. There's a, a game room. There's a pool table, and uh, a bar, and some video games and TVs. And this is what 2002, I think. And uh, and then on one side, there's uh, the other half of the downstairs. There was there was some motorcycles in there like a garage sort of thing, and some other equipment and stuff, if I remember correctly, and that was where the bathroom was. That's the only reason I even saw that stuff, because I went to the, the downstairs bathroom. And I go in the bathroom, and as I'm making a wee, I notice on all the walls, I notice there's Brooks and Dunn shit all over the place. I'm like, man, who, whoever, whoever, geez, whoever owns this place, whoever lives here, they are some serious Brooks and Dunn fans. This is, it's almost, it's almost odd, eerie almost, actually. That's, oh man, I remember doing that all the time. That's odd, eerie almost. It was an old thing I used to do. I haven't said that in forever. And then when I do come back and say it after all that time, I said it backwards. Huh. Anyway, so I go out, back to the gig, doing what our, you know, unloading, doing our stuff. And then I finally ask somebody, I go, uh, dude, by the way, what are we doing here? Who's who owns this place? They go, uh, Ronnie Dunn. We're at Ronnie Dunn's place. <laughs> like, oh, duh. <laughs> That's why all that Brooks and Dunn shit is in the bathroom. Man, they really like themselves, don't they? Whoo! You even gotta stare at yourself when you're taking a shit in your own fucking barn. Nothing against Ronnie Dunn. Swear to God, just saying, I wouldn't do that. But I guess that's where you would put all that paraphernalia, all that stuff. Out in the, I guess, whatever. I'm just not that guy. I'm on my. I'm, I have one award. I got all the bowling awards that I've had. I ain't even thrown away my radio award. Thrown them all away. I've kept one of my bowling awards. No, two. Sorry, or three. Yeah, I have two uh, rings. One was the 300 ring. Still have that. And I have uh, that first thing, first 300 ring. My, I had a 299 watch when I did my, that, my first 299. I used that to paint in. I covered that thing in paint. I didn't give a shit. That's been gone forever. But the only one I've kept, the only award I've kept out of all of them, are, besides that three, first 300 ring, is the plaque from winning the Money League a few years ago up in, uh, up in uh, what's that area? Northridge area, Mission Hills. We won the Money League, me and three other dudes. Killed it! Funny thing is, though, even though we won the league, came in first place, out of the top four teams, we made the least amount of money. As a whole. <laughs> it's fucking weird to explain that real quick. Used to be where the top team got a whole bunch of money in the Money Leagues, and then it feathered down pretty not as well as it should have. And through the years, people got sick of it and they wanted to change it and wanted to even out the money a little bit more. And uh, one of the things, ways to do that was if you shot any, if you were on a team where anyone shot 300, you guys were, the whole team got a little chunk at the end of the season. Forever how many, and, and however many, and it built up, of course, however many 300s you shoot or 800 series. Anyone, any night, from your team, and you guys go into the pot. Well, the team that came in fourth, third or fourth, had like seven 800s, and I believe 13 or 14 300s as a team, 300 games in the whole season, which was like 32, 33 weeks. They made more about money than us, because they were in the, cause we were the only team in the top four that had nobody that shot 300 or 800 for the entire season. A bunch of us came close. Brandon came close all the time. Brandon comes close all the time. Brandon McGinnis, he's a boy. If you're in South Florida, uh, South Florida, if you're in Southern California right here, especially in the San Fernando Valley, I suggest you go to Corbin Bowl or uh, Jewel City and visit Brandon McGinnis to get your balls drilled or any of your equipment. He's the shit. Great kid. He's not a kid, but he is to me. But yeah, we won that league, and I, for some reason I kept that plaque. I didn't throw that one away. I threw away my award for 11 in a row in one of those nights in that league. 
I first frame, left the 10 pin, whiffed it, and then went off the sheet. Strikes for 279. Threw 11 in a row with an open. <laughs> it's better than the one time years ago when I, I shot 270 once. And you know how I shot 270? One of the douchiest ways ever to shoot 270. And if there's a douchey way to do it, I'm there to pick up the mantle. It was one night I threw, I had the first six strikes. It was first six or seven. I believe it was the first six. And I was, this is when I was cupping the ball and swinging the shit out of it. And uh, the seventh or eighth ball swung it a little too wide and threw it in the ditch. First ball, throw it in the ditch on the first six or seven strikes of the game. And then, of course, what do I do? I fucking spare it, which basically have to throw a strike. Basically, no, you do. You have to throw a strike to spare if you throw the first ball in the ditch. <laughs> and then went off the sheet for 270. <laughs> so I went six or seven in a row, ditch. Six or five in a row, whatever it was. I can't remember, but I, I think it was the first six and then seven in the ditch. Spared it, and then went sheet. God, what a dumbass. If there's a way to shoot a high score with some kind of goofy fucking move in there, I'm going to do it. Like, you know, first ball, leave a 10 pin, whiff it, and then go sheet for 279. <laughs> Dunce. If I'd have spared it, it would have been 290 for you people that uh, aren't, um, don't understand bowling scores. As, I don't even, I don't, I, I, when I finally started bowling, it was when everything was, uh, uh, what do you call it? It was the computers had come on, so I, I didn't really, it, you know how slow it took me to figure out how to keep score? <laughs> how slow it was for me? I'd go, what, what am I doing here? What's this? That, the whole 10, the plus 10, or the plus 20, and it, it, the whole thing, I, I just, it would not register. It would not sink in, even though I grew up in bowling centers. It was the weirdest shit. You know how we all have something that's really simple that for years and years and years, doesn't matter how many times it just will not sink in. For some reason, scoring in bowling was one of those. And, and I'm a stat geek, which is really weird. But whatever. Hey, did I tell you we're on Patreon? Another reason we have to do the, I do the Patreon is because if you're listening on something like Stitcher, they're running ads. I don't get any of that money. They're using free content. I'm like goodwill. I'm, I'm, they're like goodwill, and I'm, uh, I'm like a, a, a big, a, a big fucking box of jeans you just brought in for them and gave it to them to sell, make profit. So I'm a giver. You know, here no ads. One of the other thing. Don't want to do no ads. Just get got my hour. That's it. What's the point of wasting time with ads when I'm gonna have a, sort of ads anyway when I'm pimping my friend's shit and other people's shit? Did I mention Joe Cruz? Cruzvo.com. Cruise, as in taking a cruise, not like a crew that we're going to go rob a bank. Cruise, as in Joe likes to cruise. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife doesn't mind. But, you know, whatever. People have their own thing. I'm totally fucking with you. I have no idea what Joe is like sexually um, anymore. Uh, no, sorry. Couldn't I had to I had to throw one more cheese dick joke in there? Cruisevo.com, C R U I S E V O dot com. He's who you hear on the open, and you hear on the uh, open and on the close of the promos. Hit Joe if you want somebody. You might get a good rate. He's kind of cool that way, and he's probably just sitting there. Um, waiting for me to put this up on iTunes anyway, so, you know, he ain't doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. You think Joe listens to this? No, I'm just trying to, you know, kill a good time. Okay. Thanks. Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, Wayne Roberts 811 uh, That's where I do, that's where I am the most. I don't get bothered giving out Facebook page. Who, who cares? I don't want no more fucking friends. I don't even know if I'm gonna how long I'm gonna be staying on Facebook. Um, no Instagram. 
I, not yet. Maybe at some point I'll do the Instagram thing, but I just don't. I don't want another fucking sign up and have another thing to go. I, I want to trim. I'm a minimalist. I'm not a, a gargantuist. Is that a real word? I don't know. But I know Instagram could help stuff, but see if you get your friends, your loaded friends, to put in more than two bucks. Because I know my kind of listeners. I'm the poor man's. I'm the really, 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 really poor man's. Um, uh, I don't know. Say Bill Burr. And less funny. And I at least have my hair in my head. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not as funny. Shit. I'm going to shave. So, point is, I don't expect my, the whips to be rich people, but I do expect them to have a few rich friends and you just say, hey, 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 hey. Throw, throw at this guy, this guy, this, 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 uh, throw, be a whip. Tell your, tell your load of friends to be a whip and tell them, yeah, they can do the more, they can afford the more. Just for you and your neighbors and my Libsyn bill and other bills. Because it's all about my people's power. That's why there's no ads. And I'm going to stop saying that and move on. How about that? Yeah, okay. How about the Dojo show, June 13th? If you're in the Los Angeles area, June 13th at the Dojo of Comedy atop the Sycamore Tavern on Sunset Boulevard across the street from Hollywood High School. Hey, guess what? Free parking. It's one of the biggest sellers in this town. Free parking. Go somewhere. Only 10 bucks. The link, the Inventbrite link should be... Um, oh, we got something going on here in Studio City. Can you tell? Or is that just what happens all the time when Wayne hits record? <laughs> no, don't do that again. All right. I tell you, somebody told me I look like Ronnie Dunn. So the dojo show. We've got Erica Rhodes, Slayer. Sam Tripoli, Slayer. Felicia Michaels, Slayer. And Jimmy Schubert, Slayer King. Jimmy Schubert once drove his motorcycle onto the stage at the comedy store while Sam Kinison, at the, at the end of a Sam Kinison set, and said, Sam, your ride's here. And Sam jumped on the back of the fucking motorcycle, and Jimmy rode down the steps, down the, all the way, hallway, out onto Sunset, with Sam apparently just gripping him as tight as possible. And then screaming at him, you crazy motherfucker. But he jumped on because it was for the show. It was just like, it surprised him. He was like, oh, this is a great idea. But he was apparently scared shitless. Jimmy tells that story, uh, has told that story a few times on some podcasts. It's fucking great. Jimmy's been around long time, killer, makes my dad piss his pants. So that's just one of the many reasons I love Jimmy Schubert. He's uh, part of the high council, you would say, I guess. Been around a long time and still a killer. Still tours the country. You've seen him on, in movies, in, on television shows. Many. Extensive resume, but either way, he's a fucking killer when he's on a stand-up comedy stage and mic in his hand. I've seen him tear the roof off many, many rooms. Plus, he's a fucking magician. He also does shit at the, at the uh, Magic Castle. Dude is uber talented. Fucking funny, and his tricks is, is I've seen him do his magic. Dude's awesome. And he's doing my first produced comedy show, The Art of Shredding, at the Dojo of Comedy atop the Sycamore Tavern, Sunset Boulevard. The Eventbrite link right there. And there's at the end, at the bottom of the Eventbrite link, at the bottom of that page, there's a link to the Facebook event page where you can actually see, if you don't know those comics already, you can see little videos, little promos I put together of all four of them. June 13th. Please. Please help me sell out. Jesus Christ, I'm so scared. I'm really fucking scared. <laughs> <coughs> I want to pack that room out, man. Ten bucks where you're seeing four touring headliners, country, you know, touring across the country and other places. 
So, it's time for the Wednesday joke. Speaking of comedy, 25 minutes after the hour, another of the... I found that this is in a, another of that uh, big chunk of the uh, stuff that I... shitty stuff that I wrote for the first... for my first open mic, which took a while. I went to many and watched before I ever actually got up because I'm a big, fat, skinny douchebag that finally grew a pair and did it. Sporadically at first. Get to the goddamn joke. You're right. So like I said, this is one of the first ones I wrote. Um, well, I don't, I'm trying to think where, where the hell I was mentally. <laughs> So here it is, folks, the Wednesday joke on the Waning Interest Podcast, the Unlocked Wednesday Hour, here, uh, May 22nd, 2019. What a horrible open to a joke, you fucking freak. I totally agree. Makes me not even want to do the joke anymore. Wait a minute, is this the joke? No, I'm not that fucking clever. Want to get America... Out of debt. Everybody talking about debt, debt, debt. Want to get America out of debt. They just spew that shit all the time. Well, why don't we take all the anti-gay marriage, all the pro-lifers, and 95% of all politicians and stick coal up their vice grip tight assholes. And then follow them around with a pooper scooper and pick up all the fucking diamonds. I'm on really heavy medication right now that's making the room pulsate, so whatever happens, I fucking killed. It also messes up my belly a bit, so if I drop mud in my pants, it's not part of the show. It's now 27 after the hour, and that was the Wednesday joke on the Waning Interest Podcast. <gasps> Boy, that sucked. That's why I do it for. That's, that's why I do it for. Yeah. You know, to try to, to show you guys how well I have a grasp on the English language. What the fuck is wrong? You're a broadcaster? You're a voice guy? All that smacking and slipping and slapping and stumbling and bumbling? You're a fucking joke. Exactly. That's what I said. I've, been, I've never said anything different. Yeah, I'm a joke. So I try to make more jokes out of the joke, right? Isn't that the way to go? I don't know. Me either. What in the hell are we talking about? I don't know. I think you're just really stoned on that fucking green crack weed. No, I'm not. It's Wednesday. I don't smoke green crack on Wednesdays. Jesus, man. I smell purple Urkel is what it is. Wednesdays is purple Urkel. Why can you not keep that? Oh, it's kind of like the bowling score shit. I get it. You're cool. I get it. See? Just put myself in your shoes, and I went, right, right, I have one of those. Bowling scores. Just can't get it in my fucking head and keep it there. It's so weird. And I'm saying that to try to remember the other pocket full of shit that, I, that never sticks in my head. Huh. It's so bad. <laughs> it sticks so poorly in my head, I can't even remember it to go... I can never keep this straight. Wow. Let's move on. Okay. How about the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood trailer? Most people that are hearing this, by the time you're hearing this, fuck, you've probably seen the movie three times because, let's see, I'm doing this Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. I'm guessing most people won't even hear this until 2020. So a lot of people are probably listening to this right now, and the movie already won fucking Oscars, so why are you talking about the trailer? Because it ain't come out yet, man. It just premiered yesterday at Cannes. Did I tell you I had a movie go to Cannes in 2012? Yeah, a little short film called Looking for Liana that I did. It was a thesis film for New York Film Academy. So there, Mr. Poopy Pants, yeah, we shot it up uh, north to California, up there, and it was a beautiful... It's really the reason it went to Cannes was many million because of the cinematography not because of my unbelievably fantastic acting. <laughs> no, seriously. 
it's a if I, I if I'm gonna watch if I ever watch that movie again I well I think the last two few times that I did watch it which has been a long time it's only 20 minutes the last couple of times I did watch it I watched it on mute so I didn't want to hear my dumb ass and I just wanted to pay attention to the framing of shots and the way we did stuff in the car I don't know it's just it just looks really really pretty and of course where we were and I remember and it was the really the way we did it was really cool too because what we did was we uh we all went up there so it was a group thing so cast crew everybody lived in this house for a week and every day we'd get up and we'd go out and we'd shoot and usually a lot of it had to do with the car and stuff inside the car but there was other stuff as well so we were all together so it was like this I think that's one of the reasons this shit went to can because it was a group thing on a, on a journey and everybody was there it was, and it, we were away from home I just thought I don't know I think that had a lot to do with it and I've got to tell more of the, I'll, I, that's it, that, yeah what is it front Mondays that I do acting stories and not story like I'm talking right now about oh we went to can more about the goofy shit the funny stuff and there's a bunch from that trip that I got that I got to put on the list to tell we had one guy that had a little bit of a problem with his feet fine that's where I'm gonna leave it there so the once upon a time in Hollywood trailer just came out yesterday the second one and it premiered at Cannes and Tarantino put this thing out about spoilers, you know, kind of like the Russo brothers did about Avengers Endgame. The trailer, all of them, they look really cool. I am just worried about the, the Manson part of it. But this also, this, new, this newest trailer, this trailer number two or whatever, one of the sh first shots, car, the, the, the camera is below a car door and the car door opens and a bunch of cigarette butts fall on the fucking pavement before the foot comes down out of the car and I was like ah oh, that reminds me of growing up as a kid <laughs> and uh, yeah cigarette butts were it was a lot worse and especially in almost every car every car the fucking ashtray was full of butts and it was weird I remember back then in the late 70s early 80s it was weird to get into a car where somebody didn't smoke it's neat to have the flip but anyway so cigarettes are going to be all through it because it took place you know where when it takes place back then you know, people smoked like fucking crazy back then but i'm worried about how they're going to do the manson thing and of course as you know we we know from uh inglorious bastards you know, Tarantino will take history and, you know, he's, he's fucking with it. So he's going to do that anyway, but I'm, I'm, I'm I just, I'm, I don't want it to further cement the bullshit about Manson that everybody believes. If you've never heard me talk about Manson before, a lot of the stuff is a fairy tale that you believe about Charles Manson and how ridiculous it is that they call it the Manson murders when Charles didn't man murder anybody. They should be called the Watson murders because the person who did all the killing was Tex Watson. And most people that think they know everything about Manson and that Manson was this monster and blah, blah, blah that was portrayed, which is so much bullshit. Most of them that have this, that have, they have this ingrained emotion about that. Nine out of ten of them, when I ask, who's Tex, Tex Watson? They don't even know who Tex is. If you do not know who Tex Watson is, you know nothing about Charles Manson. You just know from the shit that you hear, the little bits, about a crazy man, a da -da -da, the Manson family and the cult. There was no fucking, the cult thing is a total fucking made up bullshit. There was no cult. Were there groups of people, this cult thing that they make it like it's some Jim Jones crazy ass weird, you know, Harry, Harry Krishna type. Now, musicians, Four people that lived in an area that was free, and all they did they had, was an upkeep. They kept it up to live there. And I'm sure, you know, George Spahn got some sexual favors for it. But the cult thing, no, musicians, 
And there's so much stuff that you think that, that most people think they know about Manson, which is bullshit. And, and, it's, and they prove it every time when I say, who's Tex Watson? Like, huh? yeah, it's the guy that killed more people than Michael Myers did in the first Halloween movie. But you're all worried about this little guy, this little five foot five guy, who apparently is just can control people with his mind. He's just, he's you know, got that, got that, and he he can't be out in public. He, he he'll fuck everything up. And really, why? How come he couldn't do that? Sh use that those mind tricks and and do that shit with with guards and and be able to walk right out of a prison? Because it's a lie. Yeah, it's a crock of shit. Very similar to um, when it comes to Lee Harvey Oswald. Patsy. So many people think Lee Harvey Oswald killed JFK. That's a joke, man. So many people think uh, James Earl Ray killed Martin Luther King Jr. When, and they don't want to hear that the U.S. government was actually uh, convicted of uh, conspiring to kill MLK in the 90s, I believe it was, in a small court. And nobody wants to bring that up every year at MLK Day or month. Black History Month, they don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about him, all that stuff. They talk about civil rights and stuff. They also don't. They all, you have to go to somebody who really knows their shit on Twitter or Facebook or just happily come by a meme or something that somebody might have made to show you that, you know what else that MLK was into and proposing that nobody talks about in the mainstream? Universal basic income knowing full well that that was the problem to begin with. It was all economic. And if we're not going to get rid of money, you have to have it, you have to even it out, and so we don't want to get have poor. And there was many ways back then that they could have done universal basic income, just like there's many ways they can do it today. Anybody that says, oh, how are we going to pay for it, and just poo-poos right away, is being a jerk-off who's not remembering history at all. And not realizing how much of the money gets stolen anyway and how much red tape there is to do just to have the regular Social Security type stuff that people need that are disabled or whatever. Or at the beginning of stuff and having to get it or unemployment and the pain in the ass and so many little things can go wrong for a person who is totally innocent and needs that unemployment money but can't get it just because of something stupid or whatever. And you go, oh, what are they doing unemployment for? You get unemployment before I'm working. You don't just get unemployment. So these people who talk about people who, who've never been on unemployment before and talk, about, talk shit about people who've been on unemployment make it seem like if you're on unemployment, you're just a lazy cunt. No. The only way that you can have unemployment is from working. So it's like paying yourself. So it's a little, it's called a, a safety net for yourself from doing all that, doing a bunch of work, and then all of a sudden you have no work. Well, there's a little safety net for yourself because you did all that work, so you should have that. When well, you should have it anyway. And then we wouldn't have so many mental problems in this fucking country. If everybody didn't have to fucking fight and scratch and, and compromise just for the basic necessities of life. You ever notice that the people who don't want universal basic income, don't want uh, Medicare for all, that have this mentality that humans uh, have... It's mostly a right-wing thought that it's survival of the fittest, just like in the jungle or just like out in the wild. So you shouldn't have that. you got to pull up your boat straps and you got to do the work and blah, blah, blah. Almost, do you ever notice that almost all of those people that fucking say that shit have, are, are, are multiple pet owners? If you believe that, then why do you have three dogs and two cats? You're giving them free health care and free food. You're giving them free everything. They just have to listen to you and follow the rules. <gasps> but <laughs> humans can't do that. No, because we're not as smart as dogs. <laughs> Those dogs, when you take it to the vet, the dog have to pay? No, you're paying for it. So, what the fuck are you talking about? This survival of the fittest, blah, blah, blah. So, evidently, if you believe that, then that means you have no people in your family that, have, that may have had cancer or some other ailment or disability. 
or anything. I know you're not all of your family. None of you, all the people that you know and your group of none of them get sick. What the fuck are you talking about? It's anus uninformed talking, and it, we don't need it anymore. You're not allowed in the discussion if you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. You're not allowed to talk about Charles Manson if you don't know who the fuck Tex Watson is. You're not allowed to talk about Charles Manson if you don't know who Linda Kasabian is. Who's Linda Kasabian, Wayne? Well, she's the little twat that got immunity for, for helping fucking Bugliosi concoct this stupid-ass fucking story about the cult and blah, blah, blah. Because Linda Kasabian was there both nights for the murders. Charles wasn't. Why does she get immunity? Seems to me that Charles, and if Charles was really the one that told them to go do it, but he wasn't actually there, well, then he should not have gotten life. Most people that are just part of this part of this thing and they're not actually there, then they're usually out uh, in less than 20 years. Why not Charles? Why was Tex Watson, who did all the slaughtering, didn't do it for Charles Manson. He did it to get himself out of trouble that he'd already made for himself if you go different routes about the story. He had to pay, some, pay back some other people that he was really scared of. It wasn't Manson. He went to Manson for help. Manson said, do what you, you got to do what you got to do. I am not involved in this. That's Manson's story. And then when you, the more you learn about it, and I'm not, this is not me man, sucking Manson's dick. I'm not saying Manson was perfect. I'm not saying he was an angel. None of that shit. Yeah, he was a pimp. He was a, 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 a petty thief. He wasn't a serial killer. He wasn't a fucking murderer. He wasn't trying to start a helter-skelter in a race war. All bullshit. That Linda Kasabian got immunity to help Bugliosi put all that stuff together. And now if you go and see, do your homework on Linda Kasabian, your immediate thought, of course, because she's with Manson, well, she must have been some innocent little thing before she met Manson. No. No. Read up on Linda Kasabian and go, why the fuck did this bitch get immunity? She left her kid here and there and did all these other things, and she was she was with Tex. She was hump, bump, bump, and bumping uglies with Tex, and they were both on some serious drugs, and uh, they did some fucking up by screwing over other drug dealers. And that's and there were, the FBI was watching the Tate House, by the way. If you do your homework, if you really go in, you'll see that the FBI was actually watching the Tate House when that shit went down. Why didn't they do anything? Why were they watching the house? Because the one of Sharon Tate's friends who was also one of the big hairdressers here in Hollywood, uh, and one of the people that was killed, um, trying to spit his name out, and I can't. <laughs> he did Jim Morrison's hair, whatever. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, murder, just put in, oh my God, it's killing me that I'm saying this shit, and uh, that I've forgotten the damn name. It's driving me nuts that I have to actually do typing and stuff because I don't want to type no more, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Where is it? Where is it? My apologies profusely. Let's get right. <sighs> the list of the people list of the people man that should have just give that should give me the names Jay Sebring Jay Sebring was a big drug dealer and he had some drugs delivered and that was what Tex was actually there for to steal the drugs and Abigail Folgers Folger was getting into the drug business ire to the Folger coffee thing there's a lot of drugs involved that they don't talk about they just want to spin this, all this stupid shit on this little five foot five Charles Manson who uh, they didn't even let him have his guitar in prison. He couldn't have a guitar. Meanwhile, Tex Watson got to have uh, conjugal visits with women, had to have, got to have children, got to get married, got to write a book, got to do all kinds of stuff. He's the dude that did all the slaughtering. But Charles Manson did it, did it. Shut the fuck up. Do you, I can't believe that they, that this, they, this, I can't believe that they've snowed so many people with his idiocy. The whole thing. The more you go into it, Charles never even got to defend himself. The president de deemed him guilty in the press before the trial was even over. Anything that happens any other time, that trial, <laughs> thrown out. The president of the United States said he was guilty before everything was done. 
that's not right. That's not how it's done. That's breaking the... It's bullshit. And yeah, you can go, well, dude, who cares? It's Charles Manson, he's dead, blah, blah, blah. It's one example of many, 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 many examples of why everything is so fucked up and a, a lie, a giant lie. Do a little more digging about what Hollywood was all about then. Whew, I didn't mean to get off on Manson again. I know I've talked about it before, but it's just I'm just worried about this movie and what they're going to do. It's just going to cement more of the of a crock of shit about Charles. And again, no, not this big Charles Manson was innocent, la, 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 la. Didn't say he was innocent. Didn't say he was innocent. I've never, ever said he was innocent. Fully innocent. Is he not a killer? Yes. Is he not a murderer? Yes, no, he's none of those things. He's not a serial killer. He's not a murderer. He didn't kill anybody. You gotta kill people to actually do that. So, or, if you're gonna call Charles Manson a serial killer for not killing anybody, but saying, but ordering, supposedly, allegedly ordering, uh, then you gotta say that about the President of the United States. Every fucking one of them. And a lot more people. Oh, but they're over there and they're brown and they don't speak our language. Most of them actually probably do. But you just don't care. Oh my God, a kid got hurt today. Uh, uh, the country goes crazy. Well, what about all the kids that get uh, have to deal with bombs every fucking day? Our bombs. You just don't care. You're going right along with the fucking scum of the government. Right-wing pieces of shit, and that's not how it's supposed to be. Because most of those people over there are just like us, want to just have uh, a nice day every day, and peace, and uh, fun with family, and have a family. The, most of them. Well, they're brown, they must be criminals, and if they, they must be terrorists, and if it's... Uh, uh, you, if you believe any of that shit, just go in the mirror, take a long look, and then just start smashing your forehead into the mirror. Until you go, wait, 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 I get it. I tell you, my daughter's graduating high school. Feels so insane. Great segue, by the way. It's what I do. My kid is graduating high school. I am so old. And it's funny that younger people than me have had have kids that have already graduated. So it feels kind of silly for me to say that, that I feel old. Wait a minute. No, I am, because I still am older than them, even though they have. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? No, okay. Out of high school. Going to take a year, smartly, to figure out, what the fuck do I want to do? Really? I would tell her you know, she can do what she wants. But uh, I would say take as much time as you want. Take as much time as you want. Travel as much as you can. It's a smart thing to do. Be a little more worldly. But she actually has 18 years old. And she has probably done more traveling than me. Already. I've never been to Frisco. She's been to Frisco. Where else has she been? I've never been to Minnesota. She's been to Minnesota. I've never been in the Caribbean. She's been in the Caribbean. Where else has she been that I haven't been? A lot more of the beach. I don't care for the beach. But she's already done a bunch of traveling. But uh, I would hope that her and a couple of really good friends just decide to take, uh, take a trip, a couple of months, and go here and there. And I prefer to, uh, that one of the friends know jujitsu and karate and handles guns very well and can defend her <laughs> if need be she can defend herself but extra protection she's is uh always recommended when traveling 
especially, especially, you're a broadcaster? Jesus! Especially if you're a cracker ass cracker like her and I. So, yeah. So while, so part of getting, part of if they're like gonna travel to other countries and they like need to get shots or whatever, um, part of that program should have a bunch of uh, extra self-defense stuff and, you know, I'm kind of mostly goofing, but not. One of the questions I wanna, I don't know if she, I don't remember, I don't think, I don't know if she's seen the movie Days Confused. I don't know if she's seen it, but I have to ask her if she has, which character, because you know, last day of school, some of them are graduating, some of them are, are you know, coming back. Of course, some of the freshmen, the ones who are getting it, getting paddled. I don't know if you've ever seen Days Confused, but one of the, it's one of the great, one of the best high school movies. Richard Linkletter, the star, the springboard of so many people. Actually, I think Renee, Renee Zellweger was an extra. But there's uh, Mila jo 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 Jovovich, sorry, Ben Affleck, Jason London. That was where uh, Matthew McConaughey, his big break, playing Wooderson, basically the one character that I did not want to be. The guy that's still hanging out with high school kids in his <laughs> Did not want to be that dude. So I left my hometown at 19 just to make sure I didn't turn into David Wooderson. That's what I like about them high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> yeah, man. But let's see who else. Ben Affleck, let's see who else was in there. Oh, Cole Hauser. Um, Anthony Rapp, who is now on Star Trek Discovery playing Paul Stamets, named after the mycologist Paul Stamets, who I highly recommend you looking into and watching the Joe Rogan podcast with Paul Stamets. Excellent. Adam Goldberg, fucking hilarious. I just want to dance. <laughs> Uh, Parker Posey. So many, there's a bunch, there's a handful of others that I can't even remember at the moment. I can't remember the names, but uh, who did I? So I might as well, who did I relate to the most in Dazed and Confused? Well, I thought Randy, Fl I wanted to be Randy Floyd, but I wasn't uh, a well known jock or whatever. I was just a little bit of a, I was a little bit of everything, so. Randy was the coolest. I wanted to be as cool as Randy Floyd. But I think I might have been a little more, a little, little bit of, I was like a little bit of Adam Goldberg and Anthony Rapp with a little uh, uh, Randy Floyd and then a little of um, David Wooderson. Because <laughs> I like them redheads, man. A little bit of everything. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, holy shit, it's 53.38 past the hour, and it's time for the Wednesday radio story, which I guess I have to speed this one up. This is a good one, I think. A little dirty, so you might want to cover your ears on a little bit of it. Back in the day, there was these things called... Uh, a lot of people have them. What's the other one now? Oh, there's the... Uh, it was Fredericks of Hollywood. But there's also that other one that people used to get. But Fredericks of Hollywood was a little bit dirtier. Where it would come for a lot of women got it in the mail, and it had lingerie in it and all this cool, all this hot underwear and other shit, and it had stuff for dudes as well. But it was three quarters of it was women. Their main model was a woman named Terry Weigel, who kind of reminded you a little bit of of uh, uh, Weird Science, um, Kelly LeBrock. She kind of had a Kelly LeBrock look, but a little bit sleazier, just a hair sleazier, I guess, which is why she was doing the, she was the main model for Fredericks of Hollywood. Anyway, that was jerk off material back in the day when I was a kid. And those would arrive, and then I'd get the mail before my mom would come home and, Wah! Anyway, 
As time went on, Terry left that and got into porn. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't, you know, I wasn't paying attention. I just kind of bumped into it in the, I guess, the early 90s or whatever. And I went, oh, what? She's doing porn? I don't know. I remember how. Maybe it was when I got into radio and was more in looking into media shit. I don't know. Anyway, now, late 90s, there's a radio show uh, that's on our station that I, I hang out with this dude a bit and sometimes call in as Ace Ventura for his radio show just for a bit and, and some things. And I was there in the station when Terry was going to be a guest on his show. She comes in with her husband. Seems a little out of sorts, but really fun, so it was probably cocaine, and she had evidently had some drug problems or whatever. Anyway, in the kitchen, she takes her pants off. After she puts on a T-shirt of the a radio, uh, we gave her a T-shirt of the station at large, and she puts that on and then pulls her pants off. I'm thinking she's wearing underwear or whatever. Come into the studio. They, she comes into the studio, and I show her where to sit. There's a seat here. And I give her the headphones, and I point to the thing going, if you want to, you know, adjust the volume, here's the thing for your headphones or whatever. She grabs the back of my head and shoves my face into her crotch. No kidding. I'm, shit, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Her husband's right there in the next chair. I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. I pull back, going, what? What, what are you doing? She's like, ah, they didn't think it's funny. And, my man. and the host is sitting there going, dude, lucky you. By the way, I was a single man at the time. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, she, she's really on something. I don't smell any alcohol, I don't remember, but something's up. But anyway, does the show. She's really wacky. The host enjoys it or whatever. On the show, she says, hey, why don't you come tonight to the strip club to see my show? Uh, you and, and that guy in there, and she points to me, so it's three of us, and we're going to go. And we go. And this is the weirdest thing. I told this story on Conspiracies Now. Oh, tonight, uh, by the way, you're not going to hear this anyway, but tonight we got uh, Brady Matthews and Andy Interest. Two hours, Conspiracies Now, comedy store. But what was I saying? Oh, so we go to the thing, to do the show, and I'm surprised as shit that they even do this. She gets up there to do the show. There's a whole bunch of dudes in there. Of course, they're drinking. This is in South Florida. And she has this thing where I'm, I'm doing this thing where the, my friends here from this radio show, blah, 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 and they come on. Lays down on the stage, and each one of us, she puts, has a cupcake, puts it on her punani, and has us eat it as fast as we can, or whatever, while she does whatever, gyrates, or whatever, to go to the show. Host does it first. Gets a messy face from a brown cupcake. Her producer does it, and then I do it. Well, when I do it, she does the same thing, where she grabs the back of my head and pushes it into her, and I'm going, I miss it, might as well you know, go ahead and do what I want to do. But no, I'm trying to eat the... I'm trying to just get rid of the damn cupcake. And as she's slamming around and shoving my face, her hood ring gets caught in my fucking teeth. And she starts to go to... guy. I have to grab her butt to hold her still and then reach up and grab her and, and start waving... Grab her by the boob and then start waving in her face and trying to go, stop, 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 because I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to pull away and then rip the fucking ring out of her punani. It was crazy. It was stuck on my ding-dang tooth because she was doing her thing. <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling the story, but hey, this is fun, huh? So I come up, and finally it gets un unhooked or whatever, and, and I told her, and she goes, oh, you know, thank you or whatever, and you know, gave me a hug whatever. She wacky fucking shit. And I couldn't believe that they let, him do, let, us, let her do that stuff with us on stage because of all the other dudes you would think, the drinking and the crazy fuck. They all rush the stage and think that they get a shot. I was really surprised at that, but there you have the Wednesday radio show story with my tooth getting caught in uh, the hood piercing of porn star Terry Weigel. How fun. That's what we do here at the Waning Interest Podcast. Did I tell you that we have a Patreon page? <laughs> Thought you didn't do ads. I don't do ads. Hey, did I tell you there's a dojo show June 13th atop the Sycamore Tavern? Anyway, watch Redacted tonight. Jimmy Dore Show, Kim, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, Corbett Report. Give Duncan Trussell a lesson. He's awesome. Look for yourself. I'm just here to be a fun, babbling lecturer. Rur, 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 Remember, we were all Neo, a.k.a. One. Sorry we ran long. Had to bump comedian Ali Mikofsky. Thanks, Gary. Daddy loves you. Stop 
looking at me, man.